Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's time to fix some things we did in the last episode. Got lots and lots of comments, probably 40 or 50 or so, which is uh, probably a record for this kind of thing. So uh, nice that lots of people are interested in getting this working properly. You'll see it is working, we're just hit 40% or so, and we can correct a lot of this electronics, I think, just by reusing this cable analyzer. So I did get some people saying, you should be able to read off this thing. So yeah, um, the potential however is what we need to read and that's not showing anything because it's on the input side of the batteries so it helps if you actually just go and uh, find the right tool it's gonna be here somewhere can I not get the tool mm. maybe it just doesn't have enough no no this may just be the flooring let's just grab the flooring Okay, and we can get data off that side, but it's not that side we actually need. We ha There we go, we can get that. We actually want it on this side. So we want to read on the side of the output of this. So we'll just rotate that around. And then we should be able to, without causing much of an issue, I don't think there's any connection, it'd be horrible if there was, but we should be able to read off with regular cable, I think, this. So if you have a look what the potential is, the potential is the amount of current uh, battery storage you have. Now, again, I have a real issue with this being in watts, in that watts is a rate. It's joules per second, if I remember rightly, and that doesn't help when you have batteries. I think it needs to eat, I think that needs to be joules. It should be mega joules, okay? Or we need to have these batteries rated in megawatt hours, or megawatt years, megawatt seconds, it doesn't really much matter. But either way, joules or megawatt hours, we need some kind of calculation. However, I'm just going to ignore the fact it says W and just assume it says J. <laughs> so what we're actually looking for is when the, the potential goes below a certain value. Now you're going to need to decide that for yourself based on your own network. Now I have a network here that is currently at, if we just have a look at this, battery is set to low at the moment. So this is 1.72 out of 5. That corresponds to about 6.2. So if we say if it's below 6.5 or even below 7, and the dog next door wants to have a conversation, one second, but uh, let's say it's below 7, and um, that will be the low point. That seems to be right for my network. On yours, you'll have to actually investigate and uh, see how that goes. One second. Yeah, so I have uh, geese flying over the top, and the dog seems to feel the need to actually shout at them. Anyway... <laughs> We should be able to use this to do the same calculation we did before. How we're going to do that to fix this, first of all, is we don't need all these logic readers anymore, but I will leave them where they are, and then I just need to disconnect a few things. So I'm going to, first of all, disconnect this, this, and this. So there's no danger of us crossing over with any of of the this unregulated stuff okay so we'll get rid of that and then we will just put in some uh, cable there we go and right now it's probably complaining a whole bunch because we don't have uh, well it's not complaining it just had to have the <laughs> the uh, generator on okay so we've got now got that connected and I can just pull these back up again. I'm probably going to need uh, some battery charge for this, mind you, but, uh, oops, charge critical. We uh, are going to need to rip up a few, well, most of these circuits now. We should be able to do this a lot nicer. So let's just remove these sum circuits for the moment. Okay, and uh, we can just pick up these processors just so they're not lost anywhere and drop them there. So here we've got a cable coming in and I'll replace these with the lower cables later, the, you know, the, the cheap ones. Uh, we're just going to want, ooh, actually, there we go. And I'm going to want to rip one of these out. So let's just grab this one. Okay. So uh, again, we don't have to worry about too much about where we put this. Uh, so let's just put it here for argument's sake. And then we're going to read, uh, the only thing it can actually read is, uh, well, it'll, it can read stuff up there, I guess, but uh, let's just uh, set this to read the cable analyzer. In fact, there's no other readable things. Uh, have I got other 
Network disconnection? Oh, I have because I've removed this. Yeah, it, it was a disconnected thing anyway. That's fine. So it can only read the cable analyzer. Fine. And then we want it to set the power potential. And it needs some power, which it doesn't have right now. Uh, why don't we reconnect these networks then? So all I need to do that is uh, take you out. And the same thing with you. Connect the two up. And now this should have some power? Question mark? Uh, yeah, yes. But the potential isn't given in units that are like. Yeah, so 9.75 megawatts. I suppose, yeah, I suppose it's fine. So we want 7,000 megawatts, which is 7 million, I assume. Uh, that looks about right, so 7 million. So we're going to compare everything else to 7 million. Uh, let me just clean up a little bit more of this cable. Okay, much cleaner. So let's just put a memory unit in, quickly rename that. So not rename it, but uh, actually change its value. Uh, set the value. So let's say 7000000. And that is fine. Let's put that away again. So we just want to actually, I do actually want to rename that. That is the, uh, need to rename that back to um, um, battery low trigger. Yeah, there we go. And then we can just go back up here and use this compare unit. So input one and battery trigger. Well, battery trigger isn't around anymore, I don't think. Oh no, yes, it is. Uh, we just don't need that anymore. Fine, I've got to reuse that. Okay, uh, let's just grab the uh, screwdriver. And now we want to read uh, this logic reader. So let's rename that as well. Um, power remaining. And we want to see if power remaining, which will now be in here somewhere, Power remaining is less than, and then whatever we call this, battery low trigger. Whoops. <sighs> battery low trigger. There we are. So is it lower than that? Right now, it isn't. Good, but it's absolutely fine, and uh, we should be okay. So that means I can get rid of a lot of this stuff as well, which is really nice. Uh, I much, much prefer having as few circuits as possible, as few chips as possible, and we're probably going to use them at all, uh, uh, use them anyway, so it's not like uh, they're wasted. But uh, getting a lot of these uh, cables back is a good thing as well. So let's just uh, clear up a bit of those. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that tool just before I start this whole thing. Yeah, look at that. It feels so much nicer to actually do this. And what we probably want to do is actually just disconnect this for a second and then replace these all with three-way junctions again. Just like the way it was originally. And uh, we're done. So I guess I can move that to another point later. Uh, this is only being used as an AND gate now. Now, I did get a comment with regard to this whole thing saying that an AND gate can be done with a single min max. And just to explain what a min max is, because I very rarely use them, and uh, just in case you aren't familiar with them, it takes two inputs and outputs something. So, just like uh, a math unit. But basically, you can set it to less or greater. And it's then testing the input one against input two. So, if it's set to less, if input one is less than input two, then it'll output. Um, uh, input one. So, uh, so let's say if that was zero, this was one on a on a min max. This is less than this, so it's going to output zero. Okay, but if it's not less than, if they're equal in this case, so the one and one, it'll output number two, which is um, going to be one. So if they're equal, it'll output one. If they're unequal, it will output zero. Um, the only tricky thing is that one of the two inputs is going to be varying. 
it's going to be switching on and off um, pretty much constantly. It's sort of just varying this so that this can be always on. So I'm not quite so sure that's going to work. Uh, is it because... Let's see, what, what are the states we can possibly get? So we can possibly get um, is the left input 1. So that means the battery's low. Okay, so is 1 less than 1? No. Uh, so it's going to input... Uh, it's going to output this, which is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. from over there. So that will work fine. If this is 0, i.e. the battery is not low, then it's going to test is it less than this, in which case it will be 0. In fact, no, that works fine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to work things through and talk. Uh, in, in program terms, it's often called rubber duck programming, but uh, in this case, I'm talking to you guys about it. So uh, let's see if that will actually work in practice. So let's just grab this. And we're going to grab this. There's nothing like uh, nothing like getting this uh, working uh, without uh, without testing first. Let's uh, just actually stack these up. So that's eight processors I've saved so far. So let's go to logic min max, and we're just going to rotate that around. Not that we need to, because everything's connected to everything else in this network at the moment. But uh, we will be okay with that. So then we want to choose, uh, this is going to be the the thing that the uh, writer is going to look at. So on this side, we're going to have our input 1. And for argument's sake, uh, for it, it's going to have to be this one. So we want um, battery, battery low. Yeah, we want battery low. Let's turn it on. And we want less than. And then on the other side, we want, uh, what's this thing called? Invert button. Okay, so invert button uh, should be here. So at the moment it's zero, and that would be expected because we've got enough battery power. And then logic min max over here is what we're going to actually pick up on. So logic min max should be unique, so we don't need anything else. There we go. And everything should be back to the way it was except with less chips uh, we don't need this anymore so that's good as well and so that's just one reader one cable analyzer one memory unit and you've got to set that up to however many batteries you've got you could do something weird like you know um, figure it out dynamically because you'd have a value for uh, what one battery contains and then you'd figure out what the, the total potential amount of batteries are on the fly. Can you actually do that from this? I don't think you can. Um, actual and required both based on, you know, what is currently happening on the network. Potential is more the current level that you have available in your batteries. There's no max. So you'd have to know really, I guess, um, maybe something like a dial and a memory unit and you'd have them in, you'd have one maximum in the memory unit for whatever a battery was. You'd have to work that one out. And it's probably something like three and a half kilo, uh, three and a half megawatts, something like that, maybe. Maybe four or five. You'd have to figure it out anyway. And you'd have a dial, and every time you put another battery in, you could just increase the dial by one. But this will actually work just fine, and it doesn't need any arbitrary percentage value. You can just say, I want to have seven megawatts in my batteries before I switch on my gas generator, and that will work perfectly fine. So I'm quite happy with that now. Uh, the other optimization that I, and I'll have to do with the cables, but I'll do that after, afterwards, after the episode. Other optimization I got from someone, which is very, very nice. Ooh, what are you complaining at now? What, uh, what are you actually doing? Oh, that's the gas gen filtration. I just have to change it to the same thing, I guess. Logic min max. Um, Uh, where are you? You should be in here as well. There we go. Okay. Yeah, the other optimization I got, I'm not going to do this on camera because you've seen me do it before, is the same thing as this. So we can use, not sunlight in this particular case, but that same issue of whether the battery is low, um, this, we can decide whether that is low or not. And as soon as this hits one, we can write to a generator, which could be right here, for instance. We have to power all of this side of things, these two chips and that chip, but we don't have to power anything else. And we can just put a generator here 
and then switch it on when the power's low. And that'll switch on all of this stuff. And until the power's low, none of this will get switched on, which will save quite a lot of power. I do quite like the idea, um, but you've already seen me do it. So, you know, I'll leave that for an off camera thing. And uh, you just remind me if you don't see it on the floor in an, in an episode or two, just in case I forget. So uh, what else we're going to do this episode? Well, we've cleaned all this up, saved quite a bit of power and uh, a nicer setup. You'll see it's now switched on. So the thing is actually working again. Good. It's nice to know that happens. And yep, you can see there it's switching between zero and one. So it's an always on circuit with a min max unit. Very, very thankful to the person that told me about that or reminded me about that. It's been a while since I used min maxes. And then we need to go on to talking about the gas generator again. So I got a lot of feedback and a lot, a lot of feedback. It's probably some like 30 or 40 comments. Obviously, someone like Eric had about half of those. <laughs> <laughs> about maybe how to solve this and had done some testing work. So a majority of the stuff that we're going to be looking at, uh, I would credit Eric with. But I'm going to make some changes to that, however, to make things a little bit, um, well, faster in some cases. He had problems because to actually get this running, it would be um, quite slow to heat up the chambers and stuff like that. So what I was thinking of doing was, I'll just cover this up until I redo it, uh, what I was thinking of doing was replacing a few things that he mentioned, and we'll go through those uh, in, an, uh, in a little while. Okay, so here we are with this opened again, and hopefully this will make it easier for you to understand. We've got uh, this gas generator in here, and it's probably actually needed at the moment. In fact, let me just sh shut, off the, uh, shut off the heating system while I've got this open, because uh, I wouldn't want to run out of power when I'm midway through explaining this. What are we up to? This is going to lose quickly. It's 948. That's no real problem. We can always heat it back up again later. That's off now. Uh, what is our hydroponics up to? 693 degrees. Yeah, I need to fix that again soon. <laughs> it's fine in there as long as I don't go inside. That's Kelvin, of course, but the difference in Kelvin and Celsius there is not really uh, an issue. Don't worry, I will fix it. <laughs> anyway, um, what have we got here? So, yes. We've got two passive vents, just like I did last episode, except these time, this time these passive vents are going to head out here to some filtration units. So if I just uh, run a, a corner, and we'll run them both like this way, um, there we go, and that should hopefully make it easier to understand. So it doesn't really much matter which one is which at all. Uh, these two will become input and output lines. You can pick. There's no other issue. Let's just grab that for a second. And we can get this outside. So now, effectively, uh, we don't need this to be unsealed anymore. We can put everything back together. And the existing system may work. I've taken off that wall heater. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, let's just actually, I need to put that down. I need to re weld that block back up again. So get our welder. That's not a welder. Gray, what are you doing? <laughs> That's a welder. There we go. So that'll be nice and airtight again. We may even need more um, more vents than that, but uh, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be much of an issue. Where did that glass sheet go? There it is. There we go. So this should now be working again. It's at minus 17 because we're at night time, but everything else should be connected. I think uh, it should be trying to turn on. Oh, it's probably just killed things because I did a few different things. Uh, yeah, I removed the heating vent, didn't I? So a few of this is going to be dead, but uh, we'll come back to it once it's light time again. Uh, I don't need to, to worry about it now. Uh, right. So yes, at the back, we're going to need some filtration units. I think I've Put another. Oh, and I'll just put this tank here just so that you can see. We've got quite a lot in there. 5 MPA, 2,000 kilomoles of CO2, and 32% uh, of the tank is 886 of X, and we'll just use that X later for some heat transfer gas essentially. Uh, where did I put the. Ah, uh, there it is, atmospherics. What I was actually going to do is in there, I'm going to put uh, an air conditioning unit with a couple of passive vents and nothing else. And um, we'll use those 
to, to heat that room up rapidly rather than use that heating vent. But for now, I'm just going to take this atmospheric unit because I need it for something else. And atmospheric units, I'm going to need something else. So I may as well get another one of those. Kit atmospherics. We need two of them, actually, but I think I'm going to be out. Of, oh, I've not got enough copper. I'm going to need to copper mine for that. But I'll do that between the episodes. So we're going to have a atmospheric unit out here, a filtration unit. And let's say this left pipe is the one coming from the uh, the that side of things. So we'll just rotate this. And that's neatly available because then I should have, um, let's just see, I need one block space to, to turn down. And will that connect? Hopefully. Yeah, I've not welded this block up, I haven't. We'll deal with that later. So let's see if we can then just connect, connect this back, straight back, straight back up woods. One. And down there we go so that's the input the output's going to be here and the waste well the output's here and the waste is here so if we don't filter this it's going to just output here because it's unfiltered essentially now if i put a pollutant filter in here we'll get uh any pollutant in the atmosphere in there but i don't think there is any in there we're just pumping in co2 there's not much in the atmosphere to recover. So I think for this, we actually do want just the unfiltered output. Thank you very much. So let's just send that this way. Okay. And then we're also going to want a return line going the other way for that pipe. And we've got, that's where we're going to want that other atmospherics. So I'm just going to go and quickly see if I can find some copper now that it's daytime. And uh, we'll come back for that. And the reason my hydroponics keeps fit, well, not failing, but it's like an oven in there, is uh, large. Oh, it hasn't actually killed the wires yet. Is largely because the filter for carbon dioxide, I keep using the small filters up there, and it's the input for all of our uh, essentially carbon dioxide now. So maybe we need to make the input be this tank instead, but then this will probably empty uh, quite a bit in there, I guess. But um, I thought what I'd do is just make a heavy filter. So I've just made one of those. And we want a couple of atmospheric kits uh, extra. So let's make those. Those are actually quite quick to make. So that'll be one. And I'll just shift this off so we get two. Grab this carbon dioxide filter, which will then turn on our system over here. And I may need to get some kind of detection thing for when these filtration units are broken. And when we get some kind of breakage, I want that to actually let me know, maybe flash some lights or something in the base, or there's a new siren um, speakers. You can choose different alerts. And I, I haven't done them uh, for myself, but uh, you feel free to play with them and we may well use those. Yeah, you see it's building up a little bit now. Uh, that should essentially be pumping straight away through here. Yeah, you'll see it's going through there. Uh, once I get to the pipe, show me the pipe. Yeah, there we go. So it's building behind this, which should then be injecting coal gas into here and back out again. So let's take a look at the world pipe network. Uh, it's at 472 degrees Celsius, but that should be dropping pretty soon once it gets uh, a um, uh, once it gets a uh, fair amount of carbon dioxide into there. Are you already dropping? Seven four five. Yeah, you are dropping. Okay, good. Exactly what we want. And that filter should last a lot longer. Some other quick changes I made, by the way, an input here. So if our, our waste cylinder fills up, drop it in here. It's connected to this pipe just before this pressure and uh, this pressure kind of valve, if you like. And so anytime you put something in there, it'll go into the pipe network and get immediately pulled into atmospherics. Okay, so our system is now finished making our atmospheric kits. So at here, we're going to have another filtration unit. And this is going to send stuff back this way. Uh, what, are we going to filter this? No, I don't think we are. So this is going to be, again, from the unfiltered section. And uh, I want to probably send it that way first, just by one. And then we can go up, I think. And that can go down, I want to say. Are you in the right place for that? Yes. So neither of these are going to have any kind of filter in them. 
they're just literally going to exchange uh, anything in this pipe. They're going to run it through this pipe as quickly as possible. On the other hand, on the other end of this, and th this input is going to come out here. This is going to be actually used uh, like that. So that's going to be one line. Okay, this one is not. So uh, we will just put that straight up or something like that, just in case it checks for that as a pipe segment. And the same thing with this. Now we shouldn't get any gases in those, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then we're going to have another sort of, uh, let's put it in this way. Another segment there. Okay, so now we've got two lines. This one's going to push gas that way. This one's going to pull gas this way. And the only really reason for those is just to exchange gases as quickly as possible between, not that we're going to be moving gases because gases are instantaneous in the system, it's more about heat. This side, uh, sorry, which way am I going? This side is going to be relatively hot. Uh, if we get it wrong, it's going to be very, very hot. This side is going to be inside a room that is going to be very cold. So this side, uh, you know, we want to, to keep them separate until we turn both of these units on at the same time. At which point we'll basically have, uh, imagine that these aren't here at all. If these are both on, it's like we've just got a constant loop, but uh, we're forcing exchange between the two sides. So now all we have to think about is putting a block in here. So if I just grab, uh, do I have any spare blocks? No. Um, we're going to want to put a, well, I can actually get, I can rebuild these, I guess. That, uh, yeah, let's just do that for argument's sake. Let's just take these frames down. So at some point I'm going to have a room. And in this case, uh, let's just put it here. So it will seem to be the right kind of area. And on this side, we're going to have radiators. So we'll bring in these pipes, I think, and have our radiators. Yeah, yes, I know I have hunger. Let's just uh, eat some food. There we go. So a radiator is going to go on this wall. On this wall, and let me actually just grab that, uh, grab this back. Yep. There we go. So on this wall, we're going to have wall coolers. Wall coolers are going to be on all the time. And they are going to basically pull all heat away from this room. And this room we're going to fill with something useful. Um, maybe pollutant, X. Uh, maybe some uh, just regular gas. Doesn't really much matter, but, you know, that might be useful. And, um, yeah. Do we want to put radiators in the room instead of passive vents, I wonder? See, at the moment, this is exchanging the atmosphere which might be quite hot in here. If th that doesn't work, or you know, if we want to do it another way, we can just put pipes on the inside of here and put radiators, and maybe that will work better with pollutant in the pipes themselves. But for now, we'll leave it. We'll just assume that that is going to be okay. And uh, maybe it won't, but it should be a very, very simple modification. If not, we just have to put radiators on a complete pipe loop. And then these wall coolers in here is going to keep this block space cold. And then the radiators from that side of things are going to let us exchange, you know, heat into this room. This room will constantly be pulled and cold, and then we'll go out to a bank of radiators on the back. So it's, it seems very odd that we've got these multiple banks of radiators going on, but it will really let us uh, keep um, essentially really cold gas available uh, to sink all the heat into. Now, we're coming up for time for this episode, so I wanted to give an explanation of this episode. I will probably have built most of it, but we'll at the start of the next episode, because we'll have to look into the electronics for it and stuff like that. But I wanted to explain it all before we got there. So there's a couple of options, uh, just to briefly recap. One is that we exchange the gas inside that room with essentially uh, heat through some radiators here. The other one is that we just have just radiators on a loop all the way around. And maybe we pressurize this with pollutant. And then whatever's in this room is going to be cold as much as possible. 
with wall coolers and then radiators. There's, there's no real option, I don't think, on that front. The wall coolers are going to be better than, than air conditioners at doing that because we can just put a massive array of radiators out here that will heat sink into the Martian atmosphere. Now, right now it's 20 degrees, I understand, but at night time it's minus 70. So, you know, we're, um, and they will be, those pipes will be quite hot. The, heat, the wall coolers themselves will be keeping that done. So let's just uh, quickly go in here. Uh, do I have any steel sheet? Oh, I have one steel sheet. Let me just put that away. And I will also put that atmospheric kit on the inside here as an air conditioner. And we'll use the air conditioner to heat the inside of the room instead of um, instead of a single wall heater or something like that. And that should do the job nicely. I just want to put uh, this down here just so that I can illustrate the point with wall coolers. Uh, they're not terribly big. Let's just put them in. Uh, I've got five, but we can probably get a lot more in one block space. Uh, for example, what I don't know, maybe some of you will know this, but in the comments if you do, uh, if I flip this around, you'll see the pipe is pointing inwards. Now, if I put it there, and it will actually work if I just put another block next to it. So if I put it there, I wonder whether it covers the inside, whether it covers the outside, or both. Because otherwise, I would normally just think of putting them like this, um, you know, you get the idea. So one here, one here, one here, and we can actually. Interesting. I'm gonna to have to put them in a in an eight block circle, I think. So I'm gonna to need to get the um, oh, run out of charge. I'm gonna to need to get the power points pointing to the outside, and uh, that means just manipulating this around a little bit. So it's gonna be something like that, and. That means I can get six easily. Can I get, yeah, I can get probably eight easily. And the ninth one is going to be a bit fun in the middle because that's where the, that's where all the pipes are going to meet. So we'll flip these upside down, etc., and get that in that space. And then I could probably use another wall with them on as well if we wanted even more of them to just pull all possible heat out of this room. What I'm just wondering is how cold we can actually get it. I wonder if these can get down to close to absolute zero. That'll be an interesting experiment anyway. So we'll wait for next time to do that one, but I just wanted to explain how I'm going to probably cool this so that this guy's going to run constantly. We've got an improved um, circuit here for just determining when we're low on battery power, and that's a pretty, pretty good episode. So next time we will complete the improved cooling setup, and, um, well, maybe you'll have some more comments in between to tell me what I'm doing wrong. That's normal. So feel free to like, subscribe, share if you haven't already. And uh, of course, if you click the little bell next to the subscribe, you will get notifications of new episodes if you don't already. If YouTube is just deciding, yeah, you don't need to see them, that's one way to option. Or if you don't want to see them, make sure you untick that, of course. That is another option as well. If you don't want to get my notifications of daily episodes, it's entirely up to you. So hope to see you next time with some more stationers. I'm finishing off this thing, hopefully, perfectly. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Never perfect for me. As always, guys, thanks for watching.